Short barrel sniper rifles for law enforcement this week on Mail Call Mondays. Mail Call Mondays is brought to you by MDT. If you need a chassis system for your precision rifle, check out MDTTAC.com. I'm John McQuay with 8541 Tactical, and this is Mail Call Mondays, the show that answers your questions about precision rifles, optics, and equipment. Welcome to another Mail Call Mondays, and this Monday we've got a question from Jason. And Jason asks, for a LEO operational sniper rifle, would a short barrel 6.5 or 308 in the 10 to 12 inch range still maintain enough velocity to be lethal? Would the loss of velocity render the firearm ineffective even though it would be easier to transport maneuver in an operational standpoint? Where's the balance of lethal speed and compact maneuverability of barrel length? Thanks for the video. Stay safe. Uh, Jason, that's a great question, and uh, it caused me to uh, break out the 16-inch uh, Ma-10 308 that we have here. Uh, we did a build series on this gun many, many years ago. Uh, it's kind of been just hanging out in the back of the safe. Uh, so really good uh, reason to bring it back out, because the whole purpose of this was to be a compact uh, law enforcement sniper rifle uh, that you could still actually fight if you ended up with chance contact on your way to a hide site. Uh, so, because generally uh, fighting with a bolt gun is is a bad, bad thing. Uh, so a semi-automatic just gives you a little bit more firepower uh, if you run into something bad up close. So let's talk about your first question. And would the would a 10 to 12 inch uh, gun still be lethal? And the answer to that is absolutely. Uh, at 10 or 12 inches at inside that 300 yard range, that bullet is still going to be moving faster uh, than most law enforcement duty handgun bullets are moving. Uh, so you're still going to be able to impact the target. You're still going to get deep enough penetration to hit vital organs. So it is still going to be lethal. Now, there are some things that you have to consider there because bullets are designed to function in a certain velocity range. Uh, so when a bullet hits a target, if it is at its velocity range, then it'll expand the way that the manufacturer intended it to expand. Now, most law enforcement agencies are using expanding or fragmenting ammunition uh, for their law enforcement snipers. I hope most of us have gotten past the using full metal jacket match bullets uh, for law enforcement snipers. Yes, very often they are more accurate uh, than the fragmenting or expanding type bullets, but that slight gain in accuracy results in a huge liability of overpenetration. I've seen it numerous times. Uh, full metal jacket match bullets tend to go right through targets and keep on going even through intermediate barriers and several layers of wall, uh, running into just a huge problem for anything on the opposite side of a structure. Uh, so once you step into fragmenting and expanding bullets, now you have to figure you need that velocity to give the energy to the bullet that it needs to expand. Uh, so you can actually run into a situation where if you drop too much velocity, the bullet is not going to function the way it's supposed to anymore, and counterintuitively you can end up with a bullet that penetrates the target a little bit too much, because instead of coming apart and slowing down quickly, it stays together and just punches a single channel through. So that's going to be something that is specific to each bullet, and it's something that you're going to definitely want to check into if you choose to go that short on a rifle. Now, when we talk about a 16-inch barrel, this rifle here, I've chronographed it uh, with M118 LR spec ammunition, uh, and it runs about 2,380 foot per second at the muzzle. Now, that still gives us reasonable performance out into that seven to 800 yard range. Uh, not spectacular performance, but reasonable performance. So it's well beyond what I would expect uh, you would be utilizing as a law enforcement sniper, even in a more rural area. Uh, generally, law enforcement engagement distances are gonna be under 300 yards, so even a 10 or a 12 inch barrel is gonna have enough velocity to get the bullet there and still have good performance. You just have to worry about that expansion on target. So your lethality question, that's answered right there. Now, 
when we talk about transport, a 16-inch barrel gun really is not that difficult to transport. You're not gaining a ton of uh, extra maneuverability when you go into that 10 to 12 inch range. Um, there's a couple of reasons for this. Uh, first of all, most of the reason that guys are going to 10 and 12 inch barrels is so that they can put a suppressor on the end of it. Once you put that suppressor on there, you're back to the length of a 20 inch or 16 inch gun. You've also now cut that barrel down all that unburnt powder from these cartridges that are designed for longer barrels is now blowing into your suppressor and blowing out the muzzle of your suppressor. So you are still getting a considerable amount of concussion and a considerable amount of muzzle blast, even with a suppressor on there. Now it's better than a bare muzzle, uh, but it's still a lot. And it's still a lot more than if you were running a suppressed 16 inch gun. So you drop this barrel back, but now you have to put something on it or you have to suffer the fireball and the concussion that you're going to get. Now, the concussion is something to consider because very often uh, we don't put ear pro on when we're going into these situations. Uh, I'm towards the uh, tail end of my career and I've tried to get a whole lot better about it, but I've gotten caught off guard several times and been exposed to gunfire without ear pro on. Uh, so you need to consider, is everyone in your hide site going to be wearing ear pro or all the officers around you going to be wearing ear pro? Because if you set off a 10 inch 308 next to someone who is not wearing ear pro, uh, there's going to be irreparable hearing damage done. So again, another consideration. Um, now a 16 inch 308 is still going to be loud and it is still going to do hearing damage, but the farther back we get, the more concussion, the more flash we're going to get. Now, again, the flash may be a big deal. It's going to depend upon the tactical situation. Uh, you would hope that the situation is going to be resolved by one shot if a shot needs to be fired. Uh, but on the odd chance that you have to have follow-ups or for some reason you're dealing with multiple adversaries, um, that flash is going to be a big, huge sign that, hey, I'm here. Uh, so we want to minimize that as much as possible. So we're starting to get into a lot of drawbacks when we st start to go shorter and shorter barrel. My whole idea for a maneuverable short gun would be a 16 inch with a suppressor, and you can go with a moderate length suppressor on it, and a folding stock or folding chassis. Uh, now, with something like a direct impingement 308 like I have here, um, you need to use something like a Law Tactical Folding Stock Adapter. If you're really wanting the most compact package, I would go with a bolt-action gun, uh, something like uh, Accuracy International AT with a 16-inch barrel, a suppressor, and a folding chassis. Uh, once you fold that thing down and you sling it across your back, it's going to be very compact. It's not really going to hang up on a lot of stuff. If you have to crawl into a position, again, it's going to be still a fairly compact gun. Um, that will still be small enough that you can operate out of the back of a vehicle with it if you need to. Um, I ran a 20-inch barrel Accuracy International AE Mark II uh, for quite some time while I was on our team. And the barrel was still short enough that I could extend the bipod and work from the rear of a car uh, with the bipod on the door sill. Uh, so very easy, still very compact. And I never really thought that that gun was too big or too bulky to get in where I needed to get in. I could sling it across my back, climb ladders, climb through windows, all that stuff, uh, and be just fine. Uh, the biggest thing is getting it in and out of the vehicle, in and out of the trunk. We're getting into smaller police cars, smaller areas to store weapons at. And uh, folding 16-inch or 3 or 20-inch uh, 308 is still a relatively compact precision rifle. So that would be my suggestion there. And uh, overall, that just I think a a 10 inch or a 12 inch or 10 inch uh, 308 is going to be more trouble than it's worth. Uh, finally, the one last thing that we got to think about is uh, paperwork. So a lot of law enforcement snipers own their own guns. 
Uh, so if it's your own gun, you still have to pay the $200 and you still have to register as a short barrel rifle in your own name uh, in order to be able to possess it. Now, if it's a department-owned weapon, you still have to fill out all the paperwork. You still have to send it in. It's a slightly different form and it is tax exempt. Uh, but it's still paperwork that you got to keep with the gun. You have to maintain those records. Uh, you have to be able to get a hold of the paperwork if there's an audit to make sure that, hey, you know, this gun was properly registered. I've seen departments before that have not kept up with that paperwork and it causes problems. So really, again, a lot of expense, a lot of pain in the butt, not a lot of benefit. If the overall package is just too heavy, um, then you can look at switching down to something lighter weight, something like a 16 inch 223. Um, that would still give you a semi-automatic platform that is relatively compact and relatively lightweight. However, you can build a really light 308 bolt gun that will still get the job done. So really, I, I think the, uh, the weight savings is, is the smallest reason you would possibly wanna do that. Just having the compact overall gun is usually the reason guys go for it. And again, I would go with a suppressed 16 inch gun. Now there are some really cool things out there. Like if you really, really wanna go with the most compact, uh, quietest overall package, uh, then Accuracy International used to have an integrally suppressed option. Uh, so that barrel really ended up, it was a 16 inch barrel, but really ended up being about 20 inches overall or so and the suppressor was built into the gun. Uh, so if you're looking for something that is like a department gun, uh, that could be a good option, again, because you don't have to pay a tax on it. It's tax exempt because it's department property, it's government property. Um, but for me, I tend to shy away from integrally suppressed guns because you generally tie up that can on that gun and it can't be used on anything else. So I prefer a suppressor that I can just screw on and deal with it that way. Uh, a lot of cans out there right now have very, very minimal zero shift and very, very good return to zero. So uh, running a can like that, if you really, really got to break it down into a small package, then you can remove that can, fold the stock, have a nice compact package, reassemble it and know that you're going to be right in there. Obviously, you want to verify that through training, but that's a good option. So that is my overall impression of 10 to 12 inch 308 sniper rifles. I really don't think uh, that they're a great idea. I would stick with that 16 inch barrel and you're going to be good to go. But that's my opinion. Uh, if you've got a different one, I would love to hear it. So please drop your comment in the comment section down below or send it to us on Facebook or Twitter. If you like the video, please make sure you like, share, and subscribe. And don't forget to click that little bell icon to be notified when we release new content. If you like the video, please make sure you check us out over on Patreon so you can find out how to support content that you know and love. And until next time, get out and shoot.